So that was Paweł. Now I'm with Piotr Malata. Great to have you. Hello. Piotr, we've been with the company for 10 years. Yes, it's uh, already it's almost 10 years. I will have the exactly 10 years in March. Nice. So I wanted to congratulate you on that. So that's uh, some hard work. You are the mechanical design manager and hydrogen is part of your uh, everyday life. Yes, this is uh, part of my responsibility, part of responsibility of my engineering team. It's my engineering team also is responsible for the various aspects of uh, bus design. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the implementing new technologies, uh, designing, um, and we try to carry out on all mechanical aspects. That is wonderful. Uh, I think one of the points of your presentation is going to be that hydrogen is really safe, right? Because it is. Uh, that means I will tell about this uh, with the, some details which are very important, but mm -hmm. I will also mention about the quality of hydrogen, which is uh, very important, and of course, how the hydrogen is really being produced. Yeah, nice. And if you guys have been very careful about watching this conference, Pavel was our previous speaker, and he just mentioned uh, James Bond, and so I just Googled that. It was hydrogen indeed in 2008, but that wasn't a real hydrogen a car, which makes me all the more excited to hear about the real hydrogen stuff that Solaris is doing. Yes, so maybe on next movie we will use our buses. Now that's a great idea. Uh, let's go to your presentation. In the industry, we can often hear about the gray, blue, green, yellow, red, or even pink hydrogen. Are there really so many shades of hydrogen? There are in fact color codes, which are used by the energy industry to distinguish between the methods of hydrogen production. So which color is the greenest one? Which one drives hydrogen buses in the most efficient way? And finally, how is the hydrogen being produced? Let's come to the hydrogen colors. We will start with the gray color because that is the color of over 95% of world hydrogen production. Gray hydrogen is produced using the steam methane reforming process, SMR. In this reaction, natural gas or methane is reacted with steam at an elevated temperature to produce hydrogen and the carbon monoxide. We use it in a subsequent process. The water gas shifts the reaction, reacts additional steam with the carbon monoxide to produce carbon dioxide and additional hydrogen. We can see that the effect of the process is not only hydrogen, but also carbon dioxide, generating an obvious carbon footprint. The second part is the carbon footprint associated with the individual process units. Steam must be generated, reactor must be heated, etc. Of course, at this point, we see that the hydrogen produced in this way is not really clean. But we must also remember that even in this process, the carbon footprint per one kilowatt hour energy stored in hydrogen is up to three times smaller than the energy production in the coal power plant. So is there any more environmentally friendly way of producing hydrogen? Now we can come to the blue hydrogen which is produced mainly from the natural gas using the same SMR process. However, the CO2 is captured and stored underground, CCS process. There are also companies who try to utilize this carbon in the process called carbon capture, storage and utilization. But it is not so common this time. Blue hydrogen is sometimes described as a low carbon hydrogen, as the steam reforming process doesn't actually avoid the creation of greenhouse gases. The third, and the most ecological shade of the hydrogen that I want to present you today is the green one. Green hydrogen is produced by the electrolysis of water, meaning the breakdown of the water molecules into the two individual elements, hydrogen and oxygen. What is important on the electricity from the renewable energies is used to carry out the processes. And in this way, no CO2 is produced, making the generated hydrogen neutral to climate. This is how hydrogen should be ideally produced. There are also other colors of hydrogen, like black, 
brown, white, or pink, which are connected with other production methods. But these types are not commonly used at this time. Of course, other ways to produce hydrogen are also being developed, such as direct solar water splitting, which is a photolytic process that uses light energy to split water into the hydrogen and oxygen. These methods are currently in very different stages of research, but they offer a long-term potential for sustainable hydrogen production with a low environmental impact. But what color is the hydrogen itself? Do you know? Well, hydrogen is an invisible gas. And what may be confusing, despite the colorful description, there is no visible difference between the different types of hydrogen. We already know the basics about the hydrogen production, but what does it mean for the BASP industry? Well, fuel cells require hydrogen purity at the level of 99.97%. 99, 99 Once again, 99.97%. And it is described according to ISO standard on other, some other similar regulations. This means that such pure hydrogen is the easiest to obtain from the electrolysis process. Of course, we can use hydrogen from other production processes, but we have to remember that, as in case in gasification, hydrogen must be first purified in another process, like PSA, to reach sufficient quality parameters. So, it's not enough to have hydrogen. We must have really pure hydrogen. Now we can move to the safety issue. We know that the hydrogen is flammable and explosive, but so is gasoline or CNG. However, fortunately, hydrogen is also the lightest of elements. It is 40 times lighter than the air. This means, unlike to petrol or CNG, it doesn't stay under the bus but disperse very quickly, rising to the atmosphere at speed up to 20 meters per second. And that is why we put all of hydrogen components on the roof of the bus, on the refueling port in the lower part. Note that the gasoline is flammable in the, at the concentration of 1.4%, while hydrogen must be 4%, which, in combination with previous information, is unlikely. Hydrogen is non-toxic. However, we cannot forget that hydrogen is invisible and doesn't spare. This is why all of our vehicles are equipped with a number of safety devices that detect hydrogen and provide full round-the-clock protection for us and for the bus. Hydrogen, or our 12-meter bus, is stored in five cylindrical tanks with a total capacity of 1,560 liters in which we can storage and use 34.2 kilograms of hydrogen under the pressure of 350 bars. I think these numbers show how light the hydrogen is. Hydrogen tanks can have a different design. In Solaris, we decide to use the Type 4 tanks, which are made entirely of composite, making them 20% lighter than the previous generation tanks. It provides to our customers with a maximum passenger capacity. These tanks have a multi-layer construction to ensure maximum safety for hydrogen storage. Moreover, each of five cylinders consists of an overload valve, cutting off a leak from the system, as well as the TPRD valve. The purpose of the TPRD valve is to securely release the hydrogen from the installation if the temperature goes over 110 deg Celsius degree. Furthermore, its leak tightness is monitored by four hydrogen detection sensors located in a crucial point of the system. Above the hydrogen tanks, next to the fuel cell, near the refueling connector, and in the passenger compartment. What's more, according to the terms and conditions of EC79, which concern all high-pressure devices, the hydrogen cylinders must pass plenty of tests. Full field birth tests, bonfire tests, maximum filling level tests, pressure tests, leak tests, etc., etc. For example, 
the bonfire test is done with a cylinder under the fire with temperature not less than 590 degrees Celsius for over five minutes. During that time, the cylinder cannot break, rupture, and the gas has to be evacuated in a safe way. Hydrogen is safe. As long as we follow the rules, just like we do with CNG or petrol, which we commonly use on our vehicles. And last but not least, let's talk about the future of hydrogen. Hydrogen has seen a rapid development in last years. European Union aims to be a climate neutral society in 2050. And hydrogen will become a crucial energy vector and fundament of the energy transition together with renewable electricity. Hydrogen is one of the key factors to the decarbonization of heavy industries, heating and transport. Hydrogen is also a universal energy carrier. It can be used as an energy storage and it would allow to increase energy efficiency. In February 2019, fuel cells and hydrogen joint undertaking organization released the Hydrogen Roadmap Europe. It is a sustainable pathway for the European energy transition until 2030, in which the development of hydrogen energy is an essential element. As you can see, among milestones on the roadmap, we can find, for example, 3.7 million passenger cars and 45,000 fuel cell trucks and buses. According to another predictions, the development of hydrogen technologies will bring significant savings in final energy demand, reducing CO2 emissions, creating new markets and securing sustainable employment in Europe. We do realize that there is a still limited market for hydrogen today. But Europe is a leading hydrogen technology and European companies and knowledge institutions can be a key element in advancing technological development. It seems highly probable that hydrogen will become a fuel on which the development of electromobility will expand. Having in mind what I have just said and what you could hear in the previous presentation, I strongly believe that the hydrogen, together with battery solutions, powered the future of the mobility. Thank you very much.